After having discussed exchange rates and purchasing power parity in the previous two videos, we now move on to the interest rate parity in this lecture. To get to the interest rate parity, suppose that there is an investor who has to make the decision of how much to invest at home and abroad or whether to invest at home and abroad at all and say the two areas are the euro area versus the United States. Then this investor has basically two central considerations for uh, this investment. The first is of course the rate of return on investment in the two economies. So how much does the investment yield if the investor invests it in the US and if the investor invests it in the euro area. And the second consideration is how exchange rates are expected to move between the two areas over the course of the investment period. Now, if we assume for simplicity that there is only one investment vehicle, and this is uh, government bonds, then the rate of return would be the corresponding interest rates that are typically denoted by IT at home and IT asterisk abroad. And for the considerations, we assume that the investment horizon is one year. If the investor is located in the euro area, then an investment of one euro of a given amount, but here for the sake of simplicity, it's one euro at time t, would yield one plus the interest rate in the euro area times the amount invested at time t plus one. Alternatively, if the investor chooses to invest in the United States, the same amount, then uh, the person would have to convert euro into US dollars first. That would yield the exchange rate times one uh, in terms of US dollars at time t, which would then turn into one plus the foreign interest rate. So here the US interest rate in terms of the initial amount ET uh, in US dollars one year from now. After one year, however, the investor would need to convert the US dollars back into euro. And that would mean that the amount um, that uh, the person has earned after one year needs to be divided by the expected exchange rate in one year from now. And this would then be the expected amount that the investor gets by investing in the United States which compares against the amount that the investor gets by investing in the euro area in one year from now. If we assume that there are rational investors, then this would mean that there are no systematic arbitrage opportunities left, which implies that the two alternative investments would yield the same uh, return over one year. Otherwise, rational investors would only invest in the currency area that yields the higher return on investment. So we have, here we have that on the left hand side is the return on investment in the euro area and the right hand side is the expected return on investment in the United States. The right hand side is expected because we uh, assume that we do not know at time t the exchange rate at time t plus one. So we need to form expectations on that. And this is now the uncovered interest rate parity. And it implies basically that the interest rate in the home country is approximately equal to the interest rate in the foreign country minus the expected appreciation of the foreign currency, which means nothing else than if an investor expects a strong appreciation of the foreign currency, then the investor would be willing to accept a lower foreign interest rate because the uh, investor would still be equally well off. At home, it, the investor would um, enjoy a higher interest rate, abroad a lower interest rate, but the gains through the expected appreciation of the foreign currency. This is called the uncovered interest rate parity because we have the expectation of the exchange rate in one year from now. We can also uh, consider the covered interest rate parity that follows from the uncovered interest rate parity, 
when we allow basically for the possibility of hedging on exchange markets. So if we allow for forward exchange markets. This is called the uncovered interest rate parity because it has on the right hand side still the expected exchange rate in one year from now. The covered interest rate parity follows from the uncovered interest rate parity if we allow for the possibility of hedging. So basically that uh, an investor can hedge today against exchange rate risks. And that means we allow for forward exchange markets. What does this mean? Uh, this means that an investor today can already agree on a future exchange rate by today. We denote this uh, by FT as the forward exchange rate that is fixed at time T. So all the exchange rate fluctuations um, are then kind of uh, uh, not risky anymore for the investor, but for the person who sold the forward exchange rate today. And the main determinant of the forward exchange rate would of course be the expected exchange rate. So that would determine the price of the currency in one year from today. Because if people expect a certain exchange rate, then this will determine today's price. And only the fluctuations between today and uh, next year that are not expected, they are hedged against. How do we get the covered interest rate parity? Well, we start from the uncovered interest rate parity and substitute the forward exchange rate for the expected future nominal exchange rate, um, ET plus 1 expected. And then we rearrange uh, terms so that we can express the forward uh, exchange rate as the nominal exchange rate today multiplied by the ratio of the foreign interest rate to the domestic interest rate. How does this forward exchange rate then uh, behave? Suppose, for simplicity, that the two currencies uh, trade at parity today, which means that the nominal exchange rate is equal to one. Both currencies are uh, worth the same in terms of the nominal exchange rate. Now suppose that the foreign interest rate is 2% and the domestic interest rate is 1%. ET is equal to 1, so what we would get for FT is 1.01. That means that the currency with the lower interest rate offers a foreign exchange rate premium, basically. And this foreign exchange rate premium is exactly as high so as to offset all the arbitrage opportunities, because otherwise, if the two uh, currencies were expected to trade at parity also in one year from now, then um, it would be a good strategy for the investor to borrow in the currency with the low interest rate and invest in the currency with the high interest rate. And that these arbitrage opportunities vanish, we would have a forward uh, exchange rate that implies an appreciation of the home currency in this case over this time period. And that uh, makes sure that all the arbitrage opportunities go away.